Buongiorno and welcome to episode 10 of School 1 Steel 1 Series 2 where things aren't going to plan. In episode 9 we had a disastrous time. We lost against Fenerbahce and got knocked out of the Europa League. We drew against Aston Villa. We lost against rivals Everton and it was going so well. It was so positive just like Swansea to be honest but it's been sort of consistently up and down. So there's always been that element of threat but also that element of hope. And unfortunately, it just boiled down to a terrible three games in the last episode after uh, some positive posi positivity in the previous couple of episodes. And it's frustrating, it really is. I've got a massive squad. That's just the first team as well. And there's so many players, it's ridiculous. So it's not the fact we've got a lack of players, it's just a lack of quality. And I'm taking on Southampton twice today and also Chelsea. The first game's Southampton away at St. Mary's. Having to rely on a 16-year-old Polish goalkeeper. I've put in a bid for Ian McLaughlin, which is a, a goalkeeper available on a free. So it'll be a slight improvement for the time being, anyway, if we can get him, if he agrees to come. Liam Moore is going to make his debut at centre back alongside Kurt Skirtle. Rose and Parisi, the usual fullbacks. I've changed the tactic though. I've actually, I'm trying a West Ham tactic. Those of you that follow me on Twitter will know that I'm managing West Ham on an offline save. Now it had some sex success. <laughs> I had some success with this tactic in the third season, I think. I then changed to the wingerless tactic, which you've already seen. But this is the tactic I'm going to try today. Dos Santos is playing. I'm actually giving Alpa Potuk, uh, a guy we stole from Fenerbahce, his debut. Looks like a decent player. So he's playing in the middle. Actually involves two ad um, advanced playmakers, which is a bit unusual. Korea is going to play it in position that Lanzini plays for West Ham on my West Ham save. He was insane in that position. The average ratings were ridiculous. So I'm hoping Korea can play well. Castillo is going to be coming back into the team. Hasn't played for the last few games. He's going to play on the right hand side. Dennis Suarez on the left as an inside forward and Barini up front by himself. I think we're playing as an advanced forward because that's what he's used to. I might need an old friend, an old mascot to help me through this. Some of you may remember him. Some of you won't. All of you that had recently come to the channel in the last nine months or so but it's time to get him out I think. Persevillian the Puffin is back. Common Persevillian. Lead us to glory. The only problem is he doesn't stand up anymore he's just gonna have to balance. Yeah well he's here anyway. You don't need to see him but he is here. Come on lads we are favourites apparently I don't know why but we are favourites. Do me proud please please I I beg of you guys. I mean the squad I have is really a, a lower Premier League team now. It really is. If I thought the Liverpool team at the start of the save was average, it really is average now, this squad. But we've got some decent players in here. Correa, Dos Santos, the players we stole from Villarreal, pretty much, are actually quite good players. Danny Rose at left back, playing Peruzzi and Liam Moore, two players that weren't didn't really feature for Leicester in real life. But anyway, Grabara up the pitch. Oh, is this an opportunity now? We're on the ball. Peruzzi into Correa. Out wide to Castillo. Into the box. Oh, Barini, you have to score that. <sighs> Fabio, you're just so inconsistent with your finishing. That's why you've never got to the top of your game for whatever club you've played for. You've had high moments, but you've just never been consistent. Liam Moore batters it up the pitch. Perhaps this time. No, it's not. Danny Rose batters it up the pitch. <laughs> and here's Barini again. Is this an opportunity? He's blocked off Denis Suarez. Barini scores. Thank you, Barini. Barinio, as I'm going to call you from now on. Barinio scores. <sighs> and thanks to Barinio's goal, we are 1-0 up at half-time. And in the second half, we're going to go counter. It's just a bit more solid, this tactic. There's less to it. There's ne less complications. It's keeping it simple. I think that's what I need to do. This would be a crucial, crucial win if we can hold on to this. There's only been seven shots in total in this game. How boring is that? Here goes Mane. Mane, get rid of it. Get rid of it, guys. Mane is so good on this game. Here's Wanyama. He's also a very good player. Oh, it fizzles out. Thank you. Dos Santos once again very tired. He's going to come off for, for Sermon. And Denis Suarez is going to come off for... Could put Castillo on the, on the left. And then we'll bring on Seb Larson. Larson on the right. Barinio with the only goal of the game so far. So a lot more solid, this tactic. Hopefully less goals. It just calm my nerves. Ten minutes to go. Now this is what I did with West Ham. If it was if I was one 0 up, I would go defensive, and it would work. So if it doesn't work with this team, 
These guys just suck. Short passing, retain possession, waste time. It's what it's all about. Korea is going to come off for Sessegnon. This, this is so important to win this game. It really is. We will steal the best player on the day from Southampton. And we have crucially got three points. Well done, guys. I'm proud of you after the last episode, which was dreadful. Okay. We're stealing the best player on the day, which is Ryan Bertrand. We've got Danny Rose and Bertrand now, the two England left backs. He was man of the match. We've got so many fullbacks. I could just play a team of fullbacks. That would be brilliant. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The three points is the most important thing today. And we go up to 10th place, almost halfway through the season. We're never, we're never going to get a Champions League place in this. And we're probably not going to get a European place at all. So it's a bit of a nothing season now. We have to try and win the FA Cup. Priority though is to try and keep our job. Okay, we've... Oh, McLaughlin will be coming to the team on the 1st of January. He's pretty bang average. In fact, he's not. He's basically the same as my Polish keeper. I don't really know where I'm signing him. Oh, well. I'll probably play Grabara because he's got better potential. But at least I've got two keepers just in case. Persevillian worked. I cannot believe it, but he worked. Well, I can believe it because he's magic. Persevillian is magic. Puffin power for you. Thank you, Persevillian the Puffin. Mm. You are a hero. However, today, Chelsea is another matter. Chelsea away from home is going to be extremely tough. I'm going to stick with the same back line, though. That's a sensible thing. They kept a clean sheet. Liam Moore has come into the team and performed ad admirably. I'm tempted to use a wild card, but I don't really need to... I mean, I'd, I want to protect Suarez, I guess, but it's not the end of the world if I lose him. So I'm going to keep my wild cards because we may... You never know, we may get to an FA Cup final, for example, or an FA Cup semi-final, and I want to protect a player ahead of the final. So I'm not going to use any world cards against Chelsea, inevitably they will score. I'm not going to bother wasting anything. I think I'll just stick with exactly the same team. Andy Firth is now on the bench because of an injury to Wheeler, which was my sub keeper at the time I think. But that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to do exactly the same as what we did against Southampton. This tactic, leave it on attacking to start with, try and get a goal and then go a bit more solid. But it is more solid anyway. Why didn't I try this tactic originally? I had to go with my crazy suicidal stupid tactics that would maybe score three goals but would also concede three goals. And now we've lost so many players and lost all our best players. I just need to relax. Keep things solid. This is when they score three goals in the first ten minutes. Barinio up front. Can he get another goal? Another crucial goal for us? I hope so. Oh, not a, the, the, late, the long throws from Chelsea are just way too overpowered and they have been since FMO whatever. Oh, they almost opened the scoring. I think I've mentioned it in about seven other videos in the past, but as Pilicueta's long throws are ridiculously overpowered, previously it was David Luiz's. They always have a long throw specialist. I'd never seen Chelsea score from a long throw in real life. Ten shots to our one. Maybe I should go at the counter from the start, just because it's Chelsea. Although they may score anyway. Here's Hazard, who always seems to score millions of goals against me. Fortunately, he didn't score there. Optimistic ball. Come on, optimistic. We've got Persevillian in the puffin. What more do I need to win this game? And at half time, it's nil nil. Ooh, nil nil draw would be very good because we can top uh, swap top goal scorers. I'd rather win just to get the points at this stage, but a, a nil nil draw would actually possibly be a better result in a way because I could swap top goal scorers. I mean, we've done nothing in this game. The players aren't great in terms of average ratings, but. The, the main thing is we're level. Opportunity for Chelsky, maybe. Fabregas, good header by Suarez. If only it was Louis, but it's Dennis. Here's Diego Costa. Oh, no. No. That was too easy. Really was. Here come Chelsea again. Hazard. Guys, tackle. Come on. Tackle. Here's Hazard. Oh, he's hit the side netting again. I think I'm going to go more direct now. I think that's what we need to do. Barinio's just done nothing. Dos Santos has been awful. He's on a 6.0. What's he doing? Sermon's going to come on again. And we've got half an hour to try and get an equaliser in this game. Oh, bloody hell. Not another penalty. Maybe the glasses will work. Hazard steps up. Scores. It didn't work. It didn't work. Persevillian, what are you doing to me? We've been dreadful in this game, let's be honest. I'm going to play Adrian up front. We'll bring on Mavi for his debut on the left. He's protected. The guy we stole from Aston Villa. don't think there's any way back into this for us. 
We're just going to go route one, pump it up the pitch, and hope for the best, really. Are they going to get a third? Here's Falco, but he's tackled by Liam Moore. Lovely ball through to Castillo. What's he going to do? He's tackled. That is a free kick. How is that not a free kick? Terry just took him out. Skirtle does well, though. It's a lovely ball to Amavi. What's he going to do? Can he get a ball into the box? He can. And how has that not gone in from Castillo? Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> I just give up now. I, I just... Uh, let's hope we can beat Southampton for a second time in the next match. Because... Oh, it's three. It's Oscar. <laughs> Help me, help me. Oh wait, I could have balanced him like this. Wait, oh, almost, it's not quite working. Help, ah, yes. Can't actually see anything, but still, um, I'm far from pleased. It's poking me in the eyes. Right, here we go, perfect. Now I can see. So I'm gonna lose my three best players on the day, which is definitely Potuk, 7.1 from him, the Turkish guy. I'm also going to lose Peruzzi, you've got 7.0. Doesn't really matter because we've got millions of right backs. And the last player we're going to lose is, uh, that's a bit of a blow, Korea, 6.9. He's a good player. So we're playing Southampton once again in the league. We are 10th in the league as it stands, but Southampton are 19th, so we really should be beating them. Quite a few changes to the team because of a loss of players and some players are tired. We're only playing two days after the last game. That's the Christmas schedule for you. Francis is playing right back, we've got Liam Moore playing alongside the Czech Republic player Vit Benz making his second appearance because Skirtle is suspended, Bertrand's playing left back because Rose is quite tired, so Bertrand's making his debut, he's protected today against his old team. Dos Santos and Sebastian Larsson in central midfield, Volkan Sen is making his debut on the right wing, Sessegnon in the middle, Suarez on the left and Fabio Barrino up front by himself. A win is really required. We are such a mid-table team. It's ridiculous. I don't think we'd get relegated with this squad. Unless things went disastrous, disastrously downhill and we did continue to lose players. I haven't asked a question today. Thought we were going to open the score in there inside a few seconds. Anyway, a question for today. What is your favourite ever football manager game or championship manager game? Put it in the comment section below. It could be FMO Ace, it could be Championship Manager 3, it could be... LMA manager, like any sort of football management game, I guess. Don't include FIFA, that doesn't count. But I guess FIFA manager could count, but I don't know why you'd go for that. But yeah, let me know your favourite ever football manager game in the comment section below. I can always tell how many people have got to a certain point in, in a video. If I ask a question towards the end of a video, I always get a lot less responses. I wonder why. <laughs> oh, we've scored! Barrino! Oh, a crucial goal, another goal against Southampton. It's a brilliant cross from Sen on his debut. He's protected today, along with Bertrand. It's going to leave it on attacking for now. We're at home. We've only had one shot. Persevillian's still here, inspiring my team to glory. It's snowing. Oh, how lovely. Liam Moore. Francis, oh, he's, what was that? Seriously, brilliant save from Gabrara. The just going to go standard flexible. Calm it down a bit. Then as far as he's going to move into the middle because he's just, he's not working well out, out wide. I think he's more of a threat in the middle. So I'm going to take off Sessegnon. I'm going to swap Castelio and Sen. Go with that. Sen can play as a winger. Castelio can play as an inside forward. There we go. Swapping the rules around. Here goes Southampton right at the start of this half. Good defending by Liam Moore. But they're still on the attack in Grabara. The 16 year old keeper. Shimmy's he's still 16. Still 16 years old tipped to be a really good goalkeeper in the future actually <laughs> having to play for me here is southampton oh it's oh it's oh it's so oh, old oh, blow <sighs> this is unlucky because it's one of those annoying slide tackles that ends up being a perfect through ball and it happens way too much on the game and grabara just maybe should have done better i don't know looking dangerous with rodriguez ward prowse good save by grabara Suddenly, Southampton are just turning on the, on the, on the style, and we need to get back into this. And I've just made some tactical tweaks. Liam Moore's tired and on a yellow. That's not good. I'm going to bring on James Collins. I think we need to be winning these sorts of games. Don't know how Southampton are doing so badly, but still, Pele hits the post. 
Pele is dangerous. I think I need to change the opposition tweak tactic things. However, the problem is when substitutes come on because I haven't done it previously, you sort of don't realise. There we go. Grabara's on an 8.1. Amazing performance from the 16 year old. It's just not happening for Denis Suarez. I've, I've built him up saying he's an exceptional player and he's just not doing anything. I'm going to bring on Texera, the youngster. Tezira. Is that how you pronounce his name? Young Portuguese guy. See what he can do. I'm going to hit it long into the box just because I really want a goal. I don't think we're going to get a goal. It's going to finish 1 1. It's going to go to the randomizer. Bertrand. Grabara. Nice ball. This is nice football. Here's Barinio. A lovely play. Back to Tezira or Texira or however you want to pronounce his name. Castelio. What's he going to do? Don't waste this. Oh, he has wasted it. It was nice build-up play and then he just has a shot. He, we could have passed that there and had a better opportunity. There's their one last chance. 30 seconds to go. I don't think there is, but you never know. Collins, Francis, down the wing. Castillo, cross it in. Berahinio. Oh, there just wasn't someone shooting. Why, why didn't a shot come in there? We've drawn 1-1. One, one. It's not good enough. At least we've only lost one game today. We stay in 10th place. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the highest we can manage this season. So it's going down to the randomizer for the last uh, match of today. We steal one player, we lose one player. Let's hope we can steal a good player. Okay, the first one will be the player that I lose and the second number will be the player that I steal. I'm losing number 12, which is I think is gonna be a sub goalkeeper. Can't be 100% sure. And I'm stealing number 15. Oh no, I didn't have a sub keeper because of all the problems that's been going on. I'm losing Christian Fuchs, which is annoying, but at the same time, I've got Bertrand and Rose. Fuchs, I mean, they're all very similar. Fuchs is arguably as good, if not better than them. They're all very good players. I had three exceptional, I forgot about Fuchs. I forgot that I had Fuchs, Rose and Bertrand. Anyway, he's going to Southampton. I'm still in number 15. Oh, I'm still in Pella. 18, 17, 16, 15. Oh, that is brilliant. I really need a good striker. And he's he's a, he's, a, he's a goal scorer, isn't he? And he's moving to my team. I'm pleased with that. Very pleased with that. So this is the squad at the end of episode 10. And we're in 10th place. It's not going very well. But today's episode was a bit better. A win, a loss and a draw. That's just been the story of the series when you look at this. We're just so inconsistent. We've only won two games in a row once. We've never won two league games in a row. Next episode, we have to win all three games. We've got Stoke in the league, Bolton in the FA Cup. That's our only hope of silverware left this season. And Watford in the league. We have to win all three of them. Because after that, we've got Man City, Arsenal, Newcastle. And that's going to be tough, especially Man City and Arsenal. So, yeah. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like button. Let me know your favourite ever football management game in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Myself and maybe Persevillian are... He did okay today as the mascot, so he might be in the next episode. I'm not 100% sure. I'll see you in episode 11, guys.